Thank you, Chloe. Okay, welcome everybody. Good morning. It's lovely to see you. Um, or perhaps it's actually a little later for some of you. Maybe you've moved on to the afternoon. Depends on where you're based. Um, but just want to welcome you to this session, How Resilient Is Your Organization? And this is part of our whole week of Resilience Festival events that we have running. If you haven't visited, um, the full schedule can be found on our Capacity for Conservation website. And there's a whole list of events that we have running this week. And all you have to do is register. Um, we've also set up a Slack chat for the whole of the festival for people to connect, um, to share questions, to talk. Um, and the link is on the screen but in, we've also put it in the chat as well. So click on, and if you have any questions from today, then we can um, answer those going forward. Okay. Um, before we start the session, I'm just going to take us through some housekeeping. Oh, look at that lovely photo of those faces. Interpretation. Um, if you need interpretation, please do click on the interpretation button. And actually, even if you are listening in English, please click on the English um, line as well, because that will help when, uh, in, if interpretation is needed back into English. So if you can click there. This morning we have Talia helping us with French um, and Irma and um, Aoife in, in Indonesian in Burmese this morning too. So it's fantastic to have that. Um, so also, I think we all know to mute and unmute. Um, so if you could just stay muted, if you um, don't have anything to say, that would be great. And if your broadband allows it, it's always nice to see faces. Um, so if you'd like to put your video on, that would be great. Um, and the chat button is there for if you have questions as we're going along, please write in the chat or to, to make comments. No problem. Our operator today is Chloe, so she's behind the scenes. So any issues, do get in touch with Chloe. Um, so yes. Um, so today it's myself and Martha um, who will be delivering this session. And um, we work in the Partnerships and Organizational Development Team, or PODs for short. And our main aims are to support FFI with stronger partnerships um, and to accompany our partners um, to develop, to become stronger, organiza stronger organizations as they feel they need to. Um, so that um, leads me on to the topic that we'll be sharing today, which is about organizational developments and how this links to organizational resilience. If you were here for Tracy's keynote speech this morning, she started and opened up the conversation. Um, and we are headed today into thinking a little bit more about what an organization is and how we look at our organization. How do we assess what our organization is doing right now? So looking at the good, the bad, and the ugly, the not so good. And then at the end, hopefully we will have time for a question and answer session. Okay. So I'm just going to ask you to do a little bit um, and just in the Zoom chat. So if you press on the chat button, if you could um, just let me know what you think it takes for an organization to be resilient. What does this mean? What, does he, what do you think it needs? So I'll just give you a few moments to put that in the chat. What do we need for an organizer? And it can be anything. There isn't actually a right answer or a wrong answer. Yep, definitely flexible resourcing. A happy and thriving workforce. Thanks, Ellie, that's great. Floor, a good strategy. Yep. Great. 
Chris, situationally aware, yeah, externally, having a diverse team and delegated and adaptive leadership internally, definitely. Sustainable financing, Ellie, yes, agree. So there's a lot there. I'm just going to welcome Yasmin, who has just joined us. Hi, Yasmin. We're just diving into what makes an organization resilient. And those are some of the responses that we've had. Okay, thank you. Um, and that was good to get your thinking going. So our answer is that there's actually many interrelated elements to resilience. You've named a few of them. Um, and there are um, lots of different things and elements that can make up um, the resilience of an organization. Um, and there's ones you can see and ones that you can't see. And the ones that you can't see are often things like values, identity, leadership, and relationships. And I'll be talking a little bit more about those as we go on. Um, and some of you have already started to mention them as well. Um, so thanks for that. Okay, so I'm just going to take us through, what is an organization? <laughs> what do we think of when we have an organization, uh, a non-governmental organization, a community-based organization? Um, we often think of those as tools, really, to achieve an end. And for FFI, our organization is here to achieve biodiversity conservation. Um, but these organizations, they're tools, but they can be shaped. And I'm using an analogy here of an onion. And this has come from um, someone called Rick James at an organization called Intrac. And he and the organization have a great deal of experience with strengthening small and larger organizations. So I've used his analysis, analogy here. Um, and he talks about organizations as being hugely complex systems. So one person by themselves is really complex, but then putting lots of people together to do something actually brings much more complexities. Um, and this is particularly true of nonprofit organizations that aren't driven by profit or loss. So we have um, different things to deal with. Um, so the onion analogy, um, if you ask any NGO what it needs, um, they will have different answer. And there's lots of different relayers and interrelated elements here as you've just put in the Zoom chat. So the first thing an NGO might say it needs and came up was money, physical and human resources. So financial resources, um, you would need computers, power, cars and transport. So thinking about those physical things potentially comes to mind first. But then you've got the resources, but also then you need staff to be able to run the organization, very often volunteers. And they need to have the skills and the competence to be able to run the organization. So we've got the resources, the staff, and then peeling back the layers a little more, even with the right people, you need the systems and the structures. So finance systems, policies, Oh, a good word for policies. Everybody wants those. Safeguarding, monitoring and evaluation systems. So these keep everything running, the procedures and rules. And then moving to a deeper layer, we have things that are less easy to see, um, but are very important. So the organization's vision, mission, the direction, the strategy, what are we doing as an organization? What is our goal? But that's not the deepest level. The core of the onion is actually probably the most key. And this is again, something you can't see very easily, but this is the identity of the organization, the values and culture. 
Um, and the leadership and the relationships, which Chris alluded to at the start in the conversation, the leadership and the relationships within the organization help form that culture, those values and that identity. And that sits right at the core of the onion. And every single layer um, is essential if the organization is going to perform well. And another reason that I really enjoy this analogy um, is because the layers are interconnected um, and they're dependent on each other. So you have that very thin membrane um, and one thing can very easily affect another. So let's say, for example, if we want to introduce a new monitoring and evaluation system, this would have implications throughout the organization, throughout the onion. So we're putting in a new m &E system. That means that staff might need new skills. Um, we might need new resources to be able to implement this system, new databases, but then, Closer to the core, if we have a new system, well, how does that affect the strategy? Are we linking our monitoring and evaluation to the way and the direction that we are working? So changing one thing can change everything um, and affect the culture. There's also a hierarchy amongst these layers. Um, so like with an onion, um, uh, thinking about the core of an organization, you know, the vitality and the creative energy from that organization comes from the core. Um, and if the onion or the organization's core is rotten, um, then, or let's say we have corruption going on, um, then other areas obviously are not going to form, um, perform just as well. And everything starts to, to disintegrate from the inside out. Um, so um, people like organizations need a strong core in order to be able to grow. Um, and then we talk about organizational capacity, organizational development, and it's always really easy to see this outer layer than it is to, to see the core. So very easy to look at the outside of the onion. Um, and when working on core issues like values or leadership, it involves everybody. So it's highly sensitive. And I really like the idea that if you cut that onion, you're gonna cry. So don't cut the onion, keep everything <laughs> together and um, help, help the onion grow. Um, and then very lastly, um, uh, the onion like an organization is living, it's organic and it grows underground and in a whole lot of soil. Um, and if the soil isn't good, um, or and the external environment with which the organization is operating isn't good, then this can affect how the organization works. Um, and the organization's networks, um, its external environment will have an impact on how it behaves. So we have other sessions during the week that actually look at the soil <laughs> or look at the networks and the external environment and how you can build your organization to become resilient using that. And very lastly, um, uh, for effective organizational strengthening, we have to get to the core of the matter. So unless we understand and even engage in what's going on with the values, the culture, the leadership, um, it will, it, it, we won't be able to strengthen it. So if we just deal with the things that we can see, there's not going to be much change. So we need to deal with all the layers. Okay, so remember the core. Right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to ask Martha to take over. And Martha, you're just on mute. Thank you so much. Um, so Laura has just taken us through broadly what an organization is and all of the different parts that come together to make a strong organization. And we've talked a little bit about generally what a resilient organization looks like. But what about for your organization? When you think about the place where you work, what do you think makes it resilient? If you could put your answers in the Zoom chat. 
Uh, I'm curious to hear what is already present in your organization that makes it particularly resilient. I think one of the things at FFI that helps the organization's resilience is passionate staff who care deeply about what they're doing and are willing to work really hard in a flexible way to make things happen. I don't know what others see at their organizations. So Ellie is offering consistent and strong values as a, as a guiding kind of guiding light for an organization. Yeah, I, I think that is absolutely true. All right, you can keep thinking. If you think of something, go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, we wanted to share some ideas of things that you can consider for uh, strengthening the organization's resilience. Uh, just to say, Laura already mentioned this, but um, we are not necessarily the resilience pros, but these folks are. So they are sharing the keynote speech for us at this Resilient Festival. If you haven't attended earlier today, another session later today um, is going to be uh, presented by Tracy from Resilient Organization. We really recommend that you come. Uh, and Noor has said also that consistent and teamwork has, is also relevant for resilience. Thanks, Noor, that's great. Um, our own thought, as Laura said, is that organizational resilience comes from many related, interrelated elements. Um, and it may include attention to things like uh, uh, crisis management, risk, mis risk mitigation, um, but it's not just about crisis response, right? It's also these deeper layers of the onion, like values and identity and leadership. Um, but the whole onion comes into play. So if we're going to think about the whole onion, that's quite a lot to be thinking about. Uh, and it can be really difficult to keep all of these different layers in mind, in, especially as organizations change over time. But just to say tomorrow, we have a few sessions about organizational change. So that might be um, another, another good time to show up to, to learn about how these elements might change over time. But how can we give attention to each of these layers of the onion? One way that that can happen well is by using an organizational assessment. Uh, this isn't the only way, but organizational assessments can be great tools for uh, thinking about lots of different issues at once. And there are about a million different organizational assessment tools that you could use to do this each with their own benefits and drawbacks. You don't necessarily need to use a specific tool. You can use your own process um, or facilitate discussions another way. But tools that are pre-made, that are set templates can be useful um, because they can provide a framework for individuals to reflect on their own experience, but also for different people to come together um, and have a shared understanding of, of what is happening at an organization and how to prioritize strengthening and change. It can also provide a common language uh, for issues that are difficult to discuss in particular. So if there's a challenge with trust, uh, it could be hard to talk about that openly. So having a, a tool or a template like an organizational assessment can support that. It also supports thinking broadly, thinking across the different layers of the onion. So you're not just looking at one individual's perspective on what's happening at an organization, but thinking about lots of different issues. And finally, it can 
support an organization to monitor change over time. If you use the same assessment at different periods in the organization's development, you can see how things are changing uh, and look back at, at where you've come from more easily. So organizational assessments can be useful tools, uh, but I have to say that the, the process is much more important than the tool itself. The process of discussing the organization and the different areas and issues um, is really going to give you more depth uh, for, for thinking about how to strengthen the organization's resilience. And the tool is just a starting point. It is the beginning of understanding what to change, and then there has to be work afterwards to work on making that change happen. Uh, folks who do organizational assessments, like uh, consultants and donors, think that skilled facilitation is particularly useful for doing organizational assessments with organizations. And we think this can be true in terms of having an external perspective to ask questions, be a critical friend in the process. Uh, so having someone outside can be useful. But our biggest recommendation from Laura and Maya's perspective is to get a variety of different perspectives from staff in your organization. So pull in people from finance, operations, program, understand where people in the headquarters office and um, outside of the headquarters office, how they see the organization working and, and, and get those different perspectives. Uh, so that that's kind of our, our main main tip there, but also just this process is so important. We think it's really crucial to adapt any tool to your own context and needs. Um, so when some research went through and looked at all of the organizational assessment tools out there, what they came back with in this publication from 2017 was that the tools that are most highly regarded are the ones that were adapted or custom designed for the particular organization and its context and needs. So any tool you use, try to make it yours, try to adapt it to make it yours. Um, and I think I'm gonna hand it back over to Laura now to talk about one of the tools available for doing organizational assessment. Thanks, Martha. And of course, it's ours. FFI's tool. <laughs> um, um, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but just to say we have this tool available for um, all of you on our Capacity for Conservation website. Um, to access the tool, you have to sign in, but it should be straightforward to do that. And we use this tool, we call it, um, well, we have an organizational resilience check. Um, but it is an assessment and we use it with our partners um, and do come to our afternoon session um, if you would like to take a further look at it and we'll be looking for your advice about adapting it too. Um, so just to give you an overview, there are 12 themes in that tool and that goes right from financial management into deeper issues around culture. And we look at organization, organizational learning and leadership um, and external communications. So there's a whole set of topics that you can, you can choose to have a look at to assess your own strengths. If you were to choose one of them, let's say government, uh, organizational planning and management, what would happen is you would see a, a set of statements um, for you to consider. And these are ideals. Um, and I would never say that any organization can ever hit all of these um, in terms of being able to achieve every single one, largely because there's always change. But what you will be able to do is use it and think, is our organization not there, we've not started thinking about this. We're too small right now. It's not something we have the resources to be able to think about. So we're not there for this statement. Um, perhaps you're getting there. Perhaps you're getting there in your strategic plan. So you've started the process, but you haven't agreed it with the board. So you're on the way and you would tick getting there. 
Or maybe you agree completely with the statement, yes, we've done this, we have that, we've got an organisational strategy in place, and you put good, we feel good about this part. Um, and then we have something that is just as important is whilst you're talking, and we recommend that you talk with everybody in your organisation, because each of these different topics will affect all who are working there. Um, but write those key takeaways. And this is often more important than any score that's generated from this, because it allows you to capture the context of what you're talking about, which changes from any given moment and across months. So capture the context. Why are we good at this? What's helping us to achieve it? Why haven't we managed to get to this point in this assessment? What would we like to do? Where would we like to be? So we cap you can capture those points in your key takeaways. And that can be very useful. Um, we have updated our assessment. Um, so um, in, the, in the website, you will see two assessments. One is our older version for the users that are still using that. But we have actually updated it thinking about this idea of resilience and what it means to be resilient. So we have strengthened some of the statements um, and looking at the onion, I can tell you where we have strengthened those statements. So for human and physical resources in our assessment, we've thought a bit more about financial sustainability and thinking about what that means for an organization. We've thought for the for skills and staff, looking at overlapping staff skills. Do you have staff that understand each other's roles? And we've put a statement in about that. And then thinking about um, systems and structure, we've added a big section about crisis preparation and response. And of course, this has come from the biggest crisis we've had for a while, which was COVID. But that got us thinking, well, there are bigger and smaller crises that organisations deal with on a day to day basis. So we've put in a new theme about that. And then also thinking about information sharing as well. And then for the core, for those deeper issues, we've put in some new statements um, about collaboration, learning, um, hearing diverse perspectives from different people, and then developed the thinking about leadership and trust. And let me tell you that FFI, if we were to do the assessment, we don't hit good. We have a whole different uh, score for different areas and across time. Um, so I would always be a little concerned if you were always hitting good for all of these statements. FFI's tool, is one of very many. So Tracy um, Hatton this morning um, spoke in our keynote speech about another assessment that her um, organization has. And as Martha was saying earlier, there are very many. So you can choose what fits you. Um, and it might be that assessment isn't the way for you to go. Um, so maybe you don't want to do an assessment, but there are things that you might want to consider before you um, think about the tool that you want to use. Oh no, I need to go this way. There we are. So think about your goal. Um, what is it you're trying to achieve in your organization? And again, this discussion should be had with a group of you um, or a wider discussion within the organization. And then want to think about, do you really want to get at these core issues? Or do you want a broad overview of some of those more tangible things? Do you want to dive deep into the onion or focus on the outer layer or all of it? And then you need strong staff buy-in um, to bring them into the process too. Um, so like I said, you need to engage staff and think about how are they working? Are they enthused to be doing their work? You know, What's their thoughts and perspectives? Um, so um, if your goal is perhaps get the broader perspective on a number of different areas, so that outer layer, the ones you can see, um, tools like FFIs are often easy and useful to use. 
Okay, and these can be a good starting point um, as well. So if you haven't done this before, an assessment like FFIs or any other is a useful way into just getting that broader picture about where you are in your organization. The numbers and scores can be useful to help you visually see what's happening and also to track across time. Um, and these using these tools can be a little quicker as well. So it might speed the process up. If you do want to understand some of those deeper is issues and really um, think about what's happening, and bring in staff a little bit more, then you can use other tools to complement the assessment. So perhaps use a timeline and think about what's happened with the organization across time, achievements, milestones, things that haven't gone well. Relationship mapping, both internally, and thinking about how things work within the organization um, and also externally. And then another tool, which I really quite enjoy is the brown bag exercise. Um, and this is another in-track tool. Um, so I do recommend that you go in and look at their website. But this actually involves anonymous input um, into different areas, including and specifically culture and values. Um, so you have people anonymously provide information, but then have a chance to discuss as well. Um, and I will include the link to their website actually in the Slack channel after this. Um, so if you really want to do, maybe you want to do both broad and depth. So I would perhaps recommend um, uh, looking at facilitated semi-structured interviews too. And this can be um, asking staff about different areas of the organization and dig deeper into those um, uh, core issues as well. And with working with organizations, I've noticed that in a big group, it works well to have the discussions, but sometimes some staff may not feel as um, easy to talk about things as they would perhaps on their own, depending on who is in the room. So one-to-one -one interviews um, and semi-structured uh, interviews might help delve deeper into some of the opinions of staff. You could also do um, a combination of several using several of these tools, but going back to Martha's key point, um, adapt and choose what fits for your organization. And you might find that over time um, you start with one and the next time you come to do it, you actually decide to use different tools or a number of, um, use the assessment and then something else with it. Okay, so I'm just going to stop sharing and hand back over to Martha. Thanks, Laura. Um, for this next bit, we actually want you to be thinking for your organization about some of these decisions you could make when you're trying to decide which kind of organizational assessment process is good for you. So we've made a Mentimeter. Uh, I've just put uh, the Mentimeter in the chat, um, and uh, we might need to put it in again. Here, I'm going to put it in again for Matthew if he wants to join. Um, so if you could go to that Mentimeter link, uh, and you'll see two questions there. I'll share it on the Zoom screen as well. The first question is, for my organization, a discussion would be more useful than a score. And if you think that a discussion is more useful, vote at the four or five level. So that's a strongly agree. Um, if you think a score is more useful, uh, then you could vote uh, disagree at the one or two. So go ahead and put your votes in here. The second question is, for my organization, a quick overview would be more useful than spending time on detail. So if you strongly agree, you can say yes quick overview, vote a four or a five. If you think actually the detail is really crucial for my organization, you can vote a one or a two saying you disagree. And if you think both are equally important, I think you can vote a three as well. So we have a number of votes coming in here. Um, 
looking like people think that the discussion and the detail are slightly more important, which is great. That's really good to see what people are thinking. The other votes coming in. I'm not seeing much change. Okay, let's go to the next one. That actually, I'm going to stop the share. I want to hear from you. Somebody who voted that the discussion would be more useful, would you mind just typing in the Zoom chat why? Why was discussion more useful for you? Or if you voted for the score, you could say that too. Just put discussion or score. Tell us, tell us why you voted the way you did. Um, could do that for the second question as well, but I want to hear your whys. Why did you vote the way you did? Okay, so discussion is good for nuance given the complexity of the huge structure where Ellie works and allow more people to be heard, yeah. Any other whys? Right. If not, that's okay. If you click on the Mintimeter link again, or go back to the same one, you should see a new slide with two more questions, same style of voting, where you say, for my organization, all staff should be involved in a resilience assessment. If you think that's true, everyone should be involved. You can vote at a four or a five. If you think actually, given the dynamics at my organization, it possibly only some people should be involved. You could vote a one or a two. If you think maybe you're not sure, you could do a three. The second question, for my organization, the board should be involved in a resilience assessment. If you strongly agree, you can vote a four or a five, but yes, the board should be involved. If you think actually this is more for management, it's not a board level issue, you could vote a one or a two to say you disagree. Um, so getting, getting some votes in. I don't know if others have votes to offer here. So far, we're getting lots of involvement, broad involvement from staff and board, um, which is great. Be thinking about why, and if you if you can share in the Zoom chat a little bit about why that broad involvement is so important, please do. Not seeing any other votes come in, so I'll stop the share so I can see your chat more. So Yasmin has has said that the small team uh, means and and most of the issues arise from lack of communication. So this is an important topic to discuss widely to have that broad involvement. Absolutely. Yasmin, would you like to share a little bit more about uh, any of your answers on the Zoom poll uh, verbally? Do you want to say anything? You don't have to. Go ahead. Why not? I mean, um, we have an interesting board structure because some of the members are active uh, team members, like our founder and our head of monitoring activities, but the rest are external and um, they are pretty much disconnected from what the NGO does. Um, so I guess normally we would want the board to provide some kind of support in the things we do. And I don't know if engaging them in this kind of process would help improve that or not. I don't know. Yeah. So I, I said they should be involved just so maybe that could facilitate a bit of more engagement in general. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's, I think, especially for smaller teams, drawing in that board perspective to make sure everybody is on the same page as discussions move forward can be really valuable. So yeah, great. Any other thoughts in the Zoom chat that anyone wants to share? If not, I will go ahead and share a few other thoughts from our side about uh, challenges of organizational assessments and uh, where they are really difficult to make strong. Um, oh, and I've just seen from Noor, thank you, that, that for Noor's organization discussion and involving everyone to listen well to each other. Um, it's really important to building good communication and loyalty. That's great. Yes. I think you're right, or there's something to be said about the process building resilience, if it's a good process. But some of the challenges with organizational assessments are that they can be treated as the complete thing. They're not, not when they're not treated as a process to, to learn, um, when they're not treated as something that they should be adapted, then I think that they can be really challenging to do well. Uh, so if you treat the tool that you use as the absolute truth about the organization, then it may be difficult to adopt a learning attitude and, and see what, what those deeper issues are. So we really encourage you to adapt your tools and analyze them and make sure they're a good fit for you, but also dig in deep to those core issues at the center of the onion uh, around values and leadership and trust. Uh, to build that, as uh, Noor is saying, building that loyalty. Um, and can pay attention to the context as well. So Yasmin was sharing some about the context of her organization and how the board and the staff um, in, uh, relate to each other. I think that context for each organization as well as culture can play a role in how this type of assessment is used. So pay attention to those elements as you decide what kind of tool to use um, and do treat it as a process, not just a one-off activity uh, to get some sort of score or report to a donor, but treat it as a way to understand the organization and find ways to keep strengthening it. Um, I really do encourage you to come to the sessions tomorrow around organizational change to learn how, how that process might happen. But I'll hand it over to Laura now to share a little bit more about that, how to use the organization all assessment. Got to learn how to use my Zoom screen first. There it is. <laughs> there we are. Um, thanks, Martha. So obviously tools are only useful if you use them. Um, so you may see the tool and think, yes, that would be used. That would be good. Um, we'll do that. But you actually it can be challenging to get them embedded within the organization um, and get everybody to participate. So you have to think about which tool and how you want to use them. And then it's important to act on the results. So you've used the tool, you've, you've done an assessment perhaps, but then in order to see changes and make your organization more resilient, you need to actually use what you have found out and then decide how you want to make the change. And this can be hard um, to be able to do. So change is always hard within an organization. Um, but one thing that I would recommend is to prioritize um, the things that you want to change. Um, um, often with these assessments, you'll get a whole different um, choice of different areas that you think, yes, we should be doing something here. We could improve this. We could strengthen this area. But it is important to decide which ones that realistically you can work on right now. Um, and that also helps with not being too overwhelmed by the things that you want to change. So think right now, what is it that we can realistically focus on? and start small sometimes. So again, referring back to Intrac, because 
uh, they, they have some great um, thoughts and quotes. Um, uh, they have a Malaya, uh, they refer to a, um, a Malawian proverb. There are lots of bees, but which ones are stinging? Um, so in the context of your, of your assessment, there might be lots of things to have to do, but which ones are really the things you need to focus in on? So base the answers on your own context, your own issues, and think about prioritizing what's essential to your organization. And then when thinking about what to prioritize, because you don't just often have one thing, um, it can be useful to pay attention to both uh, the impact um, and also the cost in terms of your effort um, and your time and also the resources you have to be able to deal with it. And this again can help with any feelings of being overwhelmed. Um, so remember that you can't do everything everywhere all at once, even though the movie may suggest you can. Um, so some questions you can consider to prioritize are, are there any quick wins? Are there any small, easy things that you can focus in on and make a change quite simply. And they're the ones that I would start with or you could start with. And that also helps you to have a feeling of we've done something, we've made a movement towards achieving something. Then you can also think, right, those were the easy, quick things to do, but what's most critical to our success and our resilience? What, 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 which bees are stinging? What change will have the most impact? And how can we move towards um, those more impactful things? This will require more effort and more resources. And it's a case of just planning out how you might be able to make those changes. Um, and then perhaps don't bother right now with the low impact, high cost things. They could become done later, they might become redundant later on. So focus in on the things that need changing right now, but anything that has low impact, but is going to take a lot of effort or funds, leave them um, and focus in on the things that are an issue to you. Um, so that's a very broad overview for you all. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, but thank you for listening. Um, and I think we have some time for questions. So if you have any experiences or questions for Martha and myself or for anybody else, um, please, you can either talk if you feel comfortable to do that or write it in the Zoom chat.